little disappointed, but not surprised by the more, quote, critical reviews of Masters of the Universe Revelation. Uh, it is true that this is very kind of girl power oriented, and it did get very annoying. It's very, very explicit with that kind of message. So that was very, very uh, annoying after a while. However, I think people have gone really overboard and misdescribing and misrepresenting things. So I'm only going to be reviewing the first two episodes, and I'm going to try to minimize the spoilers. So what's the essence of the good and bad? Well, we do get pretty good He-Man in the first episode, in the first half of it. So that's pretty well done. That's very excellent. Although the premise is a little shaky, I just don't believe the sorceress would be tricked like that. But it is what it is. It's a fantasy. So, but then it pivots in the second half of the first episode. It really gets really, really strange. Those characters just start acting very odd and bizarre and just make these really weird dramatic decisions and that leads into episode two which is yes mainly tila focused and tila centric so is this a masters of the universe adaptation i would say not because from the he-man cartoon i know people keep stressing it was very male oriented and so on and so forth uh yes and no yes definitely he-man was sometimes the main star but the way I look at it, it was often a group effort. It would either be Battle Cat and Tila and Man of Arms and Orko and He-Man working together. Someone got more focused sometimes, the other person got more focused the other times. It wasn't strictly the He-Man show, so people were saying, you know, I want He-Man back, I want the classic He-Man, I want He-Man to do all the things. That's never been in the original show, so they don't know what the hell they're talking about. So a lot of people are just grifting and don't know what they're saying. But this really does diminish He-Man way too much, and he's just not in it enough to really say this is continuing the work of the 1980s cartoon. So that felt very weird that this is a very different adaptation. And in of itself, I don't mind a Tila-centric thing. It's really not Tila. More and more I think about this, this is really two things going on. There are a lot of nostalgia moments, so the people doing this do know He-Man. So it's not correct to say they're ignorant of He-Man. So there's a lot of Easter eggs and a lot of callbacks nostalgically to the 1980s cartoon as well as the other versions, but this is more and more really just a Sarah Michelle Gellar project. And the more I think about it, this is really her version of Buffy. It's not really Tila, it's her idea of Buffy and the way Buffy should have been done in the TV show, but now they're just using Tila as a kind of convenient symbol. And we get the answer, what would have happened if Sarah Michelle Gellar had full control of Buffy? And the answer is she would produce a really annoying, narcissistic, self-involved heroine who just keeps doing crazy stuff for no reason. And everyone kisses her ass and just goes out of their way to compliment her. And it's just boring. But the animation is good. The writing is okay. It's competent. The girl power stuff is annoying but it, it only cycles in but it, it does keep coming up like every seven or nine minutes it keeps coming back in and that's really really irritating but overall i would say this is well done in certain places and i would say they did a good job overall so i have to give it a fair grade of a seven with the first episode though i think the first half is really good that should get over an eight and the second episode is kind of 6.6 .6 for an average of 6.8. So it's a little bit above average. I think that's probably the most you can say for it. But it is, yeah, frequently annoying, irritating, silly, and stupid. Within the boundaries of what it's trying to do, it does make sense. It was just not engaging it. But uh, it's not right to say He-Man is totally eliminated. But he is very much diminished and that seemed really unnecessary and making Tila the central focus doesn't help that much because she's frankly a very unsympathetic and not very watchable protagonist but it's not as bonkers as Rise of Skywalker which I would give like a 6.25 and it's not as crazy stupid as Black Widow either but I thought they did some good things in Black Widow that's like a 6.5 so this is slightly above that but it's so far below so many other things it's like below the Snyder Cut it's below Watchmen, it's below She-Ra, it's below He-Man. It's slightly better than the movie. I would give it that, but I would honestly say watch the movie before this, that the movie is way more interesting and exciting and not as annoying as this. So it is so far below Buffy and Angel and her past work. And Kevin Smith shouldn't be ashamed of this, but it just feels like he, you know, he's capable of writing great women. He's capable of writing great characters. And it just seems they barely tried. It just seems like this is a 
girl power thing sometimes, then a nostalgia thing sometimes, then back to a girl power thing, then back to being a nostalgia thing. So it's kind of lazy and rancid and corporate, but if you've got the time and money, these are short episodes. They're, they're relatively painless, but I'd agree if you're a hardcore fan, you're going to be actively angry, disgusted at how vile and stupid it is, but I try to be even-handed. It is a little bit above average, and that's where it is. It's a little above average, but if you want to see Sarah Michelle Gellar being Tila, that's great. But if you were looking for Tila in Master of the Universe, this is not it. This is not it at all. So that's what it is. Thanks for listening.